Welcome to the John and Heidi Show podcast. John and Heidi. Here's John and Heidi. Today is a special day, Heidi. Do you know what today is? What is today, John? I thought you would never ask, Heidi. It is Wednesday, the 18th day of September. Today is the Air Force birthday. Happy birthday, Air Force. National First Love Day. Oh, First Love. National Cheeseburger Day. And what if a cheeseburger was my first love? <laughs> it very well could have been. Uh, National Respect Day, Purple Bra Day today, okay. Read an e-book day, Rice Krispie Treats Day. I love those and I haven't had them in years. Uh, what else do we have here? Uh, Chiropractic Founders Day, that's cool. Nice. National Cartoonage Day, all right. National Day of Civic Hacking, uh-huh. And uh, we'll do one more. Uh, how about... This one right here, Miso Day, M-I-S-O. Is that a wine? It's a soup, I think. Oh, is that a soup? Okay, see, I don't know what it is. I'm not cultured. You know that. (laughs) Um, All of that happening. And I have a guest joining me. Uh, We've got Ben McIntyre. He's a best-selling author of a bunch of books, and he's got a new one out called The Siege. We're going to chat all about it coming up. Charlie has Parkinson's. Recently, Charlie started wearing a bracelet from Vitatech Healing. I'm an avid golfer, and I was going to give it up this year. I just deteriorated that much. Now I'm back to golfing, enjoying it, having a good time. I just can't stress enough how good it is. Click on radiosavings.com to hear more of Charlie's story and find out how Vitatech Healing is helping others with ADHD, fibromyalgia, autism, and more. Plus, find radio-only savings by clicking the link at radiosavings.com. That's radiosavings.com. Now, Now, surveys and studies and such brought to you by BetterCreditCards.com. Many game shows are back to airing new episodes this month following the summer reruns, and that's good news because watching them is good for your brain. I could see that. Game shows have several cognitive benefits because they require you to pay close attention to quickly process information to either problem solve or recall information in order to provide an answer, according to Glenn Finney, Director of Memory and Cognition Program with Geyser Health in Wilkes-Barre, Pennsylvania. Doing so engages numerous networks in the brain and an engaging and enjoyable way as well, which also enhances your learning. It can boost your mental acuity. Other experts agree and say that watching game shows can also help your memory and your brain's ability to access stored information quickly. There's also evidence that playing along with the game show can improve social engagement, and that goes a long way in improving your mental health. That so, is true. I really I agree. do. And and there's some game shows. You love game shows. Oh, there shows. are some that I really, really like, and there's others that I'm like, eh, not so much. But most of them, oh, yeah. Surveys and studies and such brought to you by BetterCreditCards.com. If you want a better credit card, it can be easy and not so hard. BetterCreditCards.com. Earn more points and get more perks. Get what you're looking for in a card that works. BetterCreditCards.com. Give yourself a little credit. BetterCreditCards.com. Give yourself a little credit. BetterCreditCards.com. That's BetterCreditCards.com. Did you know? Brought to you by GenesisGoldIRA.com. Heidi, did you know that a study says four out of ten cats play fetch way more than previously believed? So four out of ten cats. Before they were like, it'd be just one or two, but they're like, no, way more. Purdue University got to mess around playing with cats, and they did an (laughs) online survey of cat owners. Over 8,000 cat owners surveyed. 41% said their cat loves to frequently or always retrieve objects that are thrown. Cats are more likely to display to display fetching behavior if they're generally more active and playful and if they live indoors. So, mm. good to know. We don't know everything, but now we know this. John and Heidi. Now, Big Screen, Little Screen, brought to you by RadioSavings.com. Adam Sandler is ready to take a swing at Happy Gilmore 2 for Netflix. I'm I've excited for this. I've been hearing that. I'm actually really excited. Usually the whole, you know... Remakes, yeah. Yeah, I'm not super excited just, about, but this one I think will be done very yeah, well. Yeah, we just watched the new Netflix version of uh, Beverly Hills Cop. That I thought was that neat. Was okay. There were some really cool things. Yeah, it was there were parts right. of it that I was like, yeah, that could have been better. Yeah. But for the most part, I was just I thought it was really good. Uh, Happy Gilmore Two is officially in production. No plot details so yet. Exciting. And uh, did someone say Beetlejuice a couple of times? Like three? Uh, the mischievous demon triumphantly returned to unleash his mayhem at the box office. That's done really well. I've got two different stories, both of them saying, the one was saying it was expected to do well, because yeah. that story came out before the weekend, and the other one came out after the weekend, and it said it did well. So It did well. I have not yeah. seen it. I do have friends who have and gone I'm out to see Beetlejuice it. I'm seeing Beetlejuice merch everywhere. Oh, yeah. 
I've not seen the film yet, but I've had friends who did see it, and they did like it a lot. So I'll have to go check it out. Big Screen, Little Screen, brought to you by Radiosavings.com. Charlie has Parkinson's. He started wearing a bracelet from Vitatech Healing, and he's noticed a difference even while sleeping. Once I got in bed, I couldn't roll over. I couldn't move. I was just whatever position I was in, just a chore to get out of bed. And now everything is so much better. Click on Radiosavings.com to hear more of Charlie's story and find out how Vitatech Healing is helping others with ADHD, fibromyalgia, autism, and more. Plus, find radio-only savings by clicking the link at Radiosavings.com. That's Radiosavings.com. Now your scoop of the day comes your way, courtesy of BetterCreditCards.com. A study found that just over 65% of adults drink alcohol to relax, and then there's others like Heidi who drink it just to put up with their husbands like me. Oh, <laughs> uh, that's not true. Though that's not why. You just like the taste of it? <laughs> I do. All right. Yeah. She's a fan of wine. Is it? What's your favorite kind of wine? Re- just dry reds. I love Pinot Noirs. I tried some. Merlots. It seems Pabs. to me that they did something wrong, because I tried it. I'm like, oh. <laughs> Why would anyone drink this? The drier, the better. Yeah, it's not for me. And uh, these days, a lot of people are relying on artificial intelligence, also known as AI, for assistance with work projects or like science experiments and even schoolwork. Yeah, some teachers don't like that. But this is a new application for the tech, at least as far as I know. A Reddit user who goes by the name Sed Ritz, S-E-D-R-I-T-Z, okay. challenged ChatGPT to write the most unattractive Tinder bio you can think of. And the result did not disappoint. I bet it was hilarious. Here is the savage response that he or she received in response to that. Uh, It doesn't say if said Ritz is a guy or a girl. So whoever this was. Um, Here is the the response. This is supposed to be the, what was it called again? The uh, most unattractive Tinder bio. Tinder bio. 42-year-old couch potato with a passion for complaining, looking for someone who doesn't mind my 12 cats and can tolerate (laughs) my collection of toenail clippings. Ew. I don't believe in deodorant, and I think showering is overrated. (laughs) My ideal date is watching conspiracy theory videos on YouTube while eating expired canned foods. Ew. No, I won't stop talking about my ex, and yes, I live with my mom. (laughs) Swipe left if you can handle the real me. Yeah. Yeah. You know, there's some things on there that I'm a little too close to because <laughs> conspiracy theory videos. Yeah, I kind of like that. Uh, uh, I do believe in deodorant, though. I don't have toenail clippings. No, and you I have know, two dogs nasty. and no cats. And also, I am not on Tinder at all. And you don't so. live with your mom. No, I don't. But I live with you. You're my you wife. Do? That uh, That's why I'm not on Tinder. <laughs> Scoop of the day comes your way, courtesy of BetterCreditCards.com. Can your IRA or 401k stand up to the next financial crisis? By allocating a percentage of your retirement into physical gold and silver with a tax-free rollover, you can diversify and safeguard your holdings from turbulent markets and economic downturns. Safeguard your assets with a tax-free rollover with a Genesis Gold IRA, the only IRA that can hold physical precious metals. Protect your retirement today with a simple phone call and receive your free gold and silver guide. Call 1-800-200-GOLD or visit genesisgoldira.com. Thank you for listening to the John and Heidi Show on a Friday. Excited to visit right now with Ben McIntyre, best-selling author, and he's got a brand new book out called The Siege. This ain't your first rodeo, Ben. You've been doing this now for a bit, haven't you? I've been going for a fair bit, John. I think this is now my 15th book. Um, wow. So I'm going back at least at least 30 years. So yeah, it's been, it's been an absolute blast. I mean, it's been great fun. And, uh, but this book is, is a funny way. It's very different from anything I've written before. It's a much more intense, closely monitored drama. This, this all takes place over the space of just six days. Uh, and, and it leads up to a, to a moment, and I won't give away what happens, but there's an incredibly exciting finale to it. So I've really loved writing this one. Now, I know this event really happened, but the way you put this book together, is everything in this book based on something true, or is it a novel set there? No, this is an entirely true story. I mean, every single word of this happened. Every quote that I give to someone is true. I mean, if somebody says something, I know they said it. So this is a, this is a nonfiction narrative. Uh, it may read like a novel. I hope it does in parts, but not one word of it has been made up. This happened on the streets of London in 1980. Now, this event happened 45 years ago, but it was a big deal, so a lot of people remember this. At the time, it was the biggest breaking news story in the world. I mean, there were correspondents flying in from all over the globe to cover it. CBS alone 
sent in six different correspondents from around the globe to, to, to cover this. And it, it, it began in a very ordinary way. But in order to give it some context, let me just explain what was happening at the time. Many of your listeners will remember the, uh, the Iranian hostage crisis in Tehran, where yeah. American diplomats and others were taken hostage. That was still ongoing at this time. And six days after American special forces attempted to liberate those hostages in Tehran and failed, you know, the Operation Eagle Claw, which went so appallingly badly wrong. Six days later, in a kind of tit-for-tat operation, six Iranian Arab gunmen attacked the Iranian embassy in London. Now, they were opposed to the Ayatollah. Their thinking was, if the Ayatollah has taken captives of, of Americans in, in Tehran, we will attack his diplomats in London, we'll take hostages in, in, in leafy Kensington, and we'll extract political concessions from him. So, so what that kicked off, they, they burst into the, into the embassy here, uh, overlooking Hyde Park, took 26 hostages, demanded the release of Arab prisoners held by the Iranian regime, and kicked off an astonishing six-day standoff that ended very dramatically uh, on, the, on, the, on the 5th of May, 1980, when the SAS, the British Special Forces Group, stormed the embassy. And I was a teenager at the time, John. I was, I happened to, it was a bank holiday here in London. And I was watching the television idly, and it cut to these extraordinary, dramatic images of men in black balaclavas storming the Iranian embassy. Uh, and anyone who was alive at that point, a uh, British person, that moment is imprinted on their memory. Absolutely. Now, Ben, this happened 45 years ago. Was it hard to find people to talk to that have a first-hand account of what happened then? Actually, that is the core of this book, is that quite a few of the people involved in this story, some of the hostages, um, many of the, the police, the politicians who were making the decisions behind the scenes, and particularly the SAS soldiers who took part, many of them are still around. And I was very fortunate because the British Ministry of Defence, for the first time ever, granted formal permission for those soldiers to speak to me. I was allowed to get their memories. And that's been a huge privilege, actually, because, you know, many of, many of that group are no longer with us. And it was, a, it was an opportunity, really, to capture their memories while there is still time. And it allowed me to reconstruct what was codenamed Operation Nimrod. That was the attack on the embassy launched by the SAS. I could reconstruct that minute by minute. It only lasted 11 minutes. Oh, wow. But it's an incredibly dramatic a dramatic moment. And it's really, it, it really became a kind of pattern for dealing with hostage situations. Interestingly, the SAS was, after this, it became a sort of global phenomenon. The SAS would be hired out to foreign governments to advise on dealing with hostage-taking situations, including in America. That's amazing. Now, the book, The Siege, is available right now, and I'm assuming it's kind of wherever books are sold? That is anywhere anywhere books are sold. Yep, it's, it's now out in the U.S., and it's, um, I hope readers enjoy it. It's, um, it's a departure for me, and I've, I've had an extraordinary time writing it. I've really enjoyed it. Well, I'm going to throw a link to the book to make it easy for them to find, and I appreciate you taking the time to visit with us. Ben, thank you so much. It's been a huge pleasure, John. Thank you. Again, Ben McIntyre, and the book is called The Siege. I've got a link to the book in the show notes for today at johnandheidyshow.com. Charlie has Parkinson's. Recently, Charlie started wearing a bracelet from Vitatech Healing. I'm an avid golfer, and I was going to give it up this year. I just deteriorated that much. Now I'm back to golfing, enjoying it, having a good time. I just can't stress enough how good it is. Click on radiosavings.com to hear more of Charlie's story and find out how Vitatech Healing is helping others with ADHD, fibromyalgia, autism, and more. Plus, find radio-only savings by clicking the link at radiosavings.com. That's radiosavings.com. Fun fact for you, Heidi. What's that, John? More people speak English as a second language than people who use it as their first language. Oh, I bet. That's yeah. kind of crazy to think about that. Fun fact for you, Heidi. What's that, John? Through the process of evaporation, condensation, and precipitation, all water on Earth is millions of years old. It just keeps being recycled oh, cool. over and over and over. Fun fact for you, Heidi. What's that, John? It has been determined that the closer your index and ring fingers are in length, the more verbally aggressive you are. So look at mine. They're pretty close in length. I don't know. Does that mean I'm verbally aggressive? <laughs> look at my fingers. I don't know. <laughs> All right. And uh, fun fact for you, Heidi. What's that, John? The majority of your brain is fat. I think we've talked about that. And our final fun fact and for- some of ours are fatter than others. Yes, mine is way fatter. And a uh, fun fact for you, Heidi. What's that, John? Tic Tacs got their name from the sound they make when tossed around in the container. I knew that. Tic Tac. Yeah. Tic Tac. Tic Tac. 
That's we go. funny. Several fun facts. Now, you know, thanks for listening to The John and Heidi Show. If you want a better credit card, it can be easy and not so hard. Bettercreditcards.com. Earn more points and get more perks. Get what you're looking for in a card that works. Bettercreditcards.com. Give yourself a little credit. Bettercreditcards.com. Give yourself a little credit. Bettercreditcards.com. That's bettercreditcards.com. Time now for the Mint Mobile question of the day. It comes your way courtesy of Mintervention.com. Question, Heidi. Almost 70% of women agreeing that skipping this has a worse impact on their day than skipping breakfast. What is it? Exercise? No, a shower. Skipping a shower has a oh. worse impact. I There have been times where I've been running late and I'm like, oh, I'm going to just go. And then the whole day I'm like, I should have just... And I remember one day I even went home and took a shower. I'm like, yeah. I just... I couldn't do it. It was not yeah. not for me. So, I don't know. Your results may vary. Mint Mobile (laughs) question of the day comes your way, courtesy of Mintervention.com. Charlie has Parkinson's. He started wearing a bracelet from Vitatech Healing, and he's noticed a difference even while sleeping. Once I got in bed, I couldn't roll over. I couldn't move. I was just whatever position I was in, just a chore to get out of bed. And now everything is so much better. Click on radiosavings.com to hear more of Charlie's story and find out how Vitatech Healing is helping others with ADHD, fibromyalgia, autism, and more. Plus, find radio-only savings by clicking the link at radiosavings.com. That's radiosavings.com. Time now for some weird news brought to you by WeirdGiftOfTheDay.com. A couple of popular YouTubers have created a giant, fully functioning iPhone, measuring almost seven feet tall. Wow. Yeah. Uh, they constructed the giant-sized version of an iPhone 15 Max, which set the Guinness World Records for the largest smartphone replica. In order to qualify for the record, the phone was required to actually work. So it was made using an 88-inch TV screen wow. for the screen and was able to send text messages and emails, operate all of the apps, and even take photos. It also has a flashlight and a charging port, which fits the largest USB-C cable in the world. Oh, so, that's crazy. Yeah, that is kind of crazy. Why would you do that? Just to get, to a, get a world record. People yeah. are insane with those things. An 88-inch television for the screen. That thing is huge. Again, it's over almost seven, almost seven feet tall, so not quite. So there you go. Weird News brought to you by WeirdGiftOfTheDay.com. Time now for the list brought to you by BetterCreditCards.com. Favorite cereal, Heidi, what is it? I like Count Chocula and Booberry. Well, let's see if they made the list of the I'm top sure they cereals. It says if you're in a mood to spark a debate at work today and uh, get some people angry, ask about their favorite cereals. And this is the top 10. And I've got a link to the whole thing if you want to read it all. 10, Cocoa Puffs. 9, Honey Bunches of Oats with Almonds. 8, Lucky Charms. 7, Frosted Flakes. 6, Apple Jacks. 5, Fruit Loops. Oreos come in. Oreo O's come right. in at number four. Captain Crunch Berries, number three. I do like Captain honey Crunch. Honey Nut Cheerios, two. The uh, the voice of the honey bee for many, many years is a friend of ours. Yes, so he I, he'll be happy to know that. I'll send this to him. And uh, the number one answer is Cinnamon Toast Crunch. Really? Yeah. So I was expecting, you know, all the popular things that I thought of, like Cheerios, didn't make yeah. the list. Rice Krispies didn't make the list. Honeycomb was Raisin Bran, Honeycomb, all yeah. the stuff. Uh, sugar, sugar Pops, what is it called? And mine weren't <laughs> of, in there. None of, none of the things I grew up on. These are all like new cereals, apparently. The list brought to you by BetterCreditCards.com. Can your IRA or 401k stand up to the next financial crisis? By allocating a percentage of your retirement into physical gold and silver with a tax-free rollover, you can diversify and safeguard your holdings from turbulent markets and economic downturns. Safeguard your assets with a tax-free rollover with a Genesis Gold IRA, the only IRA that can hold physical precious metals. Protect your retirement today with a simple phone call and receive your free gold and silver guide. Call 1-800-200-GOLD or visit GenesisGoldIRA.com. Time now for the quote of the day. It comes your way courtesy of Radiosavings.com. Our quote today is from a guy named Chandler Bing from a TV show called Friends. That's a character, but we'll still I'm go aware. with it. aware, yeah. It says, I'm not good at giving advice. Can you make a sarcastic comment? <laughs> I like that. So uh, that is, uh, I, I absolutely positively relate to that, by the I way. I totally so. <laughs> relate to that. <laughs> and you got some advice, John? Nope. <laughs> Just move on. I'm done. That is your quote of the day. Comes your way, courtesy of radiosavings.com.
This portion of the John and Heidi Show is brought to you by the John and Heidi Show. That sounds kind of funny, but it's true. Go to your local radio station and ask them to start carrying the John and Heidi Show. Here's the best part. They can carry the show for free. They play a couple commercials, but it doesn't cost them anything every month. So if you know a radio station that could use a little bit of help, send them our way. Send them to johnandheidyshow.com. Again, johnandheidyshow.com. We would love to do a radio program in your community. Then you could listen to the podcast and listen to us on the radio. John and Heidi. We always like to wrap things up around here with good news, and I think this is good news. It comes your way, courtesy of GenesisGoldIRA.com. And uh, we always like to, to come up with some fun stories, and I think this is a really cool story here. Uh, this comes from uh, Vienna, Virginia. It says, he's more than a custodian, he's a friend. High school students surprise the custodian with his dream car. How cool is that? That's pretty crazy. James Madison High School in Virginia. A group of freshman students gave their beloved custodian, Francis Apaku, I probably said his name wrong, I'm sorry, but they gave him a birthday surprise he will never forget. He's from Ghana. He moved to the United States 10 years ago, and he's become a cherished part of the community and the school. His infectious kindness and unwavering friendliness have left a a lasting impression on the students. Ever since we met Francis, he's been super kind and friendly and sometimes even says prayers for us, one student shared. And when they asked about his birthday wish, he had mentioned his lifelong dream of owning a Jeep Wrangler. But he said, you know, he thought that would never, ever happen. Determined to make the dream come true, these students started a GoFundMe. They wanted to raise a little bit of money, so they gathered over $20,000. Holy cow! And they got him a, uh, it says... A uh, 105 Candy Red Jeep Wrangler. So I don't know what that is exactly, but there's photos of it here in the show notes. How cool is Tears that? Tears of joy streamed down his face when they gave him the gift. He says, oh, my God, oh, my God. He repeated over and over and over. And he says, <laughs> I don't believe this is happening in my life. I give thanks to Almighty God for making today What a beautiful me. man. I love that. The students were thrilled to give back to somebody who had shown them so much kindness. He's more than a custodian. He's a friend to us. Kindness, Aww. His kindness is contagious. And we just said, let's get him a Jeep Wrangler, explained, explained one of the freshmen. There's a video and there's some photos as well. I think that's really cool. That is so cool. Think about the number of times there are people in a position like his where they make an impact on people's yep. lives and they don't they might not always know it so yep, i think it's 100%. really cool that he knows that he's made an impact that's beautiful and that he's cherished and loved and so uh i think that's just neat i've got a link to the story in the show notes for today at john and heidi show.com time to say goodbye heidi goodbye heidi goodbye everybody thanks for listening to the john and heidi show